What's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to create this scroll carousel using React and Frame Emotion. I've provided a link in the description to the original creator who actually inspired me, so definitely go check them out. Before we jump into the build, I've gone ahead and created a pre-built React project which will be used for this tutorial. If you want to get access to that GitHub repository, I have another link in the description which will take you to my website, and from here you'll get access to that GitHub repository which contains all of the starting files. However, if you want to use your own project, that's absolutely fine as well. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I've just opened up VS Code and I have my starting files inside of here. So the first thing we want to do is to come over to our terminal here. And what we want to do is we want to install all of the NPM packages, which includes our React and also Frame Emotion packages. So in order to do that, you type in npm install all with the dot, hit enter. And what should happen now is it should start to install all of the packages which are connected to um, the project as part of the starting files. After doing that, and once it looks like this, the next thing you want to do is to start up a local server. So in order to do that, just type in npm start. What should happen now is it should start up our local React server. And to make sure it's working correctly, if your browser and server is starting to look like this, where we have our top section here, our bottom section here, and a section in the middle for the horizontal scroll component, then we can start the build. So I've gone ahead and opened up our VS Code again. And what we want to do is go into our source folder here. We're going to go into our components folder. And for this tutorial, we'll primarily be working with these two files here. So our horizontal scroll.jsx file, as well as our horizontal scroll.css, which will be controlled and used for the styling. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start importing some of the properties um, into our .jsx file here for the horizontal scroll. So the first thing we want to import is our style sheet. So it's called horizontal scroll.css. After doing that, the next thing we want to import is our images. So for our first image, I'm just going to call it one from, and I've already defined the positioning of these images as part of the starting file. So I'm just going to grab it from folder here called images and put in item one. What I'm going to do is copy that three more times underneath, change these to two, change this to two, change this to three, put this as number three, and finally number four and four. Fantastic. Once you've imported your style sheet as well as the images, the next thing we want to import is our frame emotion properties. So in order to do that, there's three properties we want. So for our first property, we want to use our motion property. The second one is going to be something called the use scroll effect. And our third one is going to be called the use transform effect. And we're going to target that from frame of motion like so. Once we've done that, the final item we want to import is the use ref hook from React. So we can target exactly where we want that scroll effect to take place. So all you have to type in is use ref. And it should bring in our use ref up here in the top line, importing that from React. Fantastic. Once it's looking like this, we can start to structure out our .jsx file here. So what we can do for the parent div, we want to give it a class name of carousel. And inside of carousel, we want to create another div. And we want this div to be called content container, like so. Inside of content container, we want to create another div and call it images. And this is where all the images will be located. After doing that, we then want to create another div called image item. And then once you've uh, created the structure. I did forget another item that we have to import and that's the image container component that I built as part of the starting file. So just grab it from image container. What we can do is we can leverage this image container here. So I'm going to import it like so. And I've set some predefined props. So for example, if we go into our image container here, I've set the image source as a prop to access the source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this prop, go back into our horizontal scroll here, paste it into here. And we want to target number one as our first item. Save that. And just to make sure this is working, I'm going to jump back into our browser here. You should now see that image appearing. That means it's working correctly. After doing that, I've also added a description as well as part of the design. So I'm going to grab this prop as well, go back into here, type in description, and I'm just going to put a date. I'll just put in June 2024. So what we're going to do now is we want to copy this item up here and paste it three more times underneath. And instead of one, we want to change it to two, three, and four. That way we have different images for each image item. And then we also want to change the description of each image. So let's do 
May, um, April, and finally March. Fantastic. So now what we can do now is go back into our browser here. Within our horizontal scroll component, we should see four different images as well as our description. But since the background is white, we can't exactly see it. But once your design is starting to look like this, it means we can keep progressing further. So once you've done those, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to style some of those properties that we just created here. So what I'm going to do is I've opened up the horizontal scroll.css file here, and this is where we're going to start manipulating some of those styles. So the first item we want to manipulate is the carousel, which acts as the parent div, which controls uh, the entire section for that component. So what we can do now is target the carousel. With that carousel, what we can do is give it a background color. I'm just going to give it gray for the time being so we can see the difference between the top section to that component. And for the height, this will determine uh, the distance of where we want that scroll effect to take place. In this case, I'm going to give it something like 500 vertical height for the distance of where we want that scroll to occur. So if we go back into our browser, you should notice our background has changed. But you'll notice if I keep scrolling, it goes down for as long as 500 vertical height. So that's the distance from this line here all the way to the top where we want that scroll effect to occur. After doing that and manipulating the carousel, the next thing we want to do is to grab onto the content container here. So with that content container, what we want to do is we want to give it a fixed height of something like 100 vertical height. So that's the viewport where that scroll effect will take place. We also want to give it a position of sticky so that in order to make it fix to the top of the container, what we want to do is to set the top value of zero. And if we go back into here, as we scroll down, it should stick to the top, which it does. If we keep scrolling, it should stop sticking like so, and that's exactly what we want. After doing that, we then want to uh, define and give it a display of flex. We want to align items to center, and we want to justify content to flex start so everything spans from left to right. After doing that, and once your design is starting to look like this, then we can jump into the next step. The next thing we want to do is we want to target the actual images themselves. So I'm going to grab onto those images and what we can do here is we have four different images. So what we can do is give it a display of grid and for the columns themselves, I'm going to give it a grid template columns of one fraction, two, three, four, since there's four items in there. So if we go back into here, we should have our items in a line like this. After doing that, we then want to give it a row of one fraction. If we come back into here, you'll notice that there's not much of a gap in here. I want to give it a bit of a gap. So in order to do that, what we can do is to type in grid gap, give it something like three vertical width. So it's responsive. Um, that's starting to look a lot better. The next thing we want to do is to give it some padding. I'm going to give it zero to the top. I'm then going to give it four rem for the right, zero for the bottom and four rem for the left. Save that. If we come back into here, it should now push out to the side, which it does here. And that's starting to look really cool. I noticed in the design that we have this scroll bar, which I don't want to be shown to the user. So in order to get rid of it, what we can actually do is for the overflow, we want to change this to hidden. And if we go back into our browser here, that scroll bar is no longer existing. So once you have completed the structure and you've also got some of the styling going on here, the next step that we want to work on is to start bringing in some frame of motion properties so we can start to manipulate exactly how that scroll effect takes play. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a reference for the carousel. So in order to do that, what we want to do is we want to create a const and call it target ref. And for this target ref, we want to bring in the use ref hook from react. And as our default value, I want to give it a value of null. However, we want this value to change once we place it onto a particular div that we want to interact with in the DOM. So what we can actually do is I'm going to go inside of our parent div here. And for this parent div, I'm going to give it a ref and reference it to the target ref like so. What this basically means is we now have full visibility of exactly where this scroll effect will take place. And that's going to occur within our carousel parent div. Yeah. After doing that, we then want to leverage some of Frame Emotion's properties, one of which is the use scroll effect. So what we can do, and as part of use scroll effect, one of the objects as part of use scroll is the scroll Y progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage this like so, and I'm going to target the use scroll. And for the use scroll, I want this to occur 
in the target whereby the target is connected to the target ref. What this basically says is the scroll Y progress will occur wherever the target ref is located. In this case, it's located inside of our carousel div Yeah. So after defining those two consts, the next item we want to define is a style manipulation const. So what we can do here is I'm going to create something called const X. And for this const X, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab use transform, which is another property as part of frame emotion. And from here, I want to grab and manipulate the scroll Y progress. I want the scroll Y progress to occur from the top being zero. And at the very bottom, once it reaches the bottom of the carousel, set it to one. And after doing that, we then want to change the properties of the X value to change. So in this case, as our starting point, I want to give it something like 0%. And once it reaches the very bottom, I want that X value to change to something like negative 55%. Save that. And what we can do here is once you've defined these three consts, the next thing we want to do is to go inside of our images div here. And what we want to do is we want to bring in this X value inside of our images div here. In order to do that, and since it's a frame of motion property, you just type in motion.div like so. I'm going to copy this, paste it underneath here. We've now transformed this div into a frame of motion div. And because of that, we can now manipulate our style. And I'm going to target the X value here, paste that directly inside of here. And once you have completed that, if we actually go back into our browser here, I just noticed in my browser that I got this error. And the reason for this is because I didn't put in a capital P for progress. So please make sure to change this to a capital P like so. We save this go back into our browser, we should now have that scroll effect taking place. So as I scroll within the carousel parent div, our reference has been targeted and our frame of motion, scroll Y progress, use transform and new scroll values are being played directly inside of that div. And that's looking really, really cool. To make it a bit more easy on the eyes for the user, I am going to change this to the same background color as the sections. So hashtag 131313. We go back into here, we have this nice transitional effect and it blends in very nicely with the rest of the project. If you want to increase the speed of this scroll effect, the thing you can actually do is go back into your VS code here. And what you can actually do is with the height of the carousel, you can actually determine and change the height of it. So in this instance, I've halved it from 500 to 250 vertical height. And therefore the scroll effect is going to be a lot faster than how it was before. So that's a really neat feature if you want to implement this into your own project. Another neat feature as well, um, these values here determine exactly where the X value will be depending on the top and bottom represented by these two values here. So for example, if you want that scroll to last a bit longer, you can change it to something like, I don't know, negative 100%. So if we keep scrolling, that's going to keep scrolling all the way until it gets to end of gallery. So that's another neat feature you can also implement into your own project if you wish. I like them always being present, so I'm going to push this back to 55%. As part of a bonus feature for the video, what I'm also going to do as part of this video and tutorial is I'm actually going to also manipulate the images themselves to give them some nice transitional effects which can be done using Frame of Motion's properties. Again, I have a video in the description and I'll also put it up here if you wanna learn more about some image animation effects. So definitely go check it out if you want. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transform each image item into a Frame of Motion div. So let's do that right now. So change this into motion.div, type this into here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it some properties. So the first property I'm going to give it is an initial value. So before the user scrolls onto it, I want to give it an opacity value of zero and a Y value of something like negative, actually no, 150. Once the user gets in view, so while in view, I want the opacity to change to one. So it's hundred percent and that Y value to be changed to zero. So it goes back to its original state. And then I'm also going to give it a threshold or something like 0.99. After doing that, I then want to give it a duration. So in order to do that, what we can do is to type in transition. Inside transition, I'm going to give it a property called duration. Give it something like 0.5 seconds for the effect to, to take place. And then also for the ease, I'm going to give it an ease value of ease out. So it has a nice ease to it. I just realized the effect wasn't working because with initial, I didn't spell it correctly. So please be careful with how you spell things. So change that to initial. Um, so if I come back into here, as I scroll down, you will notice that first image has those effects that I defined here. And that's starting to look really cool. What we can do now is we can actually copy these values here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to each image item here. So I'm just going to save that, that, and also this item here. 
After doing that, in order for these properties to take place, we have to transform this into a frame of motion div. So make sure to do that for all of the image items. After doing that, what I'm going to do now is go back into our browser. And as I scroll down, you'll notice we have this really cool transitional effect. So as the user scrolls into the image, that effect takes place and that looks really, really cool. Awesome, so that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you wanna learn more about React, Frame Emotion, or even Next.js, definitely go check out my channel as I upload roughly every two weeks. If you wanna deep dive into learning more about image transitional effects using Frame Emotion, or if you wanna learn the basics, definitely go check out this video that I uploaded a couple of weeks ago. So without further ado, I will catch you guys in the next one. See you later.